Hey guys, Kush here, and today's review video will be a bit different than my other ones. A while back, I made two videos expressing that I really don't like the English dub of Sailor Moon. In fact, I'd say it's garbage. But ever since then, all I've got is... I recommend that you watch the Japanese dub instead. Um, that, that's good to know. The Japanese dub is way better. It's more faithful to the source material, too. Uh, thanks for the info. <laughs> um, well... You should watch the Japanese dub instead. The Japanese dub. The Japanese dub is so good. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Japanese dub, Japanese dub. Alright! I will watch and review season one of the Japanese dub. <sighs> Before we begin this review, I want to go over a bit of the history of Sailor Moon and why it's such an important piece of not just anime, but media in general. A big reason to why I'm doing this is that some people overlook the importance of the show because of the awful original English dub. Yeah, I'm not referring to the Viz dub if anyone's wondering. The creator of Sailor Moon, Naoku Tachiyuchi, came up with the idea with her family, friends, and seeing herself and others go through depression. She wanted to create characters who people, mainly younger girls, could look up to. When Sailor Moon first came out, it was not only different for shoujo anime and manga, but for media targeted towards younger girls in general. Before Sailor Moon came out, a lot of things targeted towards younger girls had quite simple stories. They did get more exciting at times, but most of the time, they kept the simple style going on. On the other hand, Sailor Moon had much more action. The characters were given special abilities, and they fought monsters in every episode. Sailor Moon was also a big part in helping pioneer Japanese media alongside Dragon Ball and Pokemon. There was anime and Japanese media that came to countries outside of Japan before, but they didn't have the same impact as Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, and Pokemon did. After its success, Sailor Moon inspired a lot of other shows targeted towards younger girls, both in and outside of Japan. Even after about three decades, Sailor Moon is still gigantic, becoming on the top 50 highest grossing media franchises, and having a huge fan base that stretches all across the world. Now to discuss the story, which begins with a young girl named Usagi living a normal life. She meets a talking cat named Luna who tells Usagi that she's the chosen hero to become Sailor Moon. Due to her young age, she gets very frightened in combat at first, but she gains more confidence as the show goes on. Over the course of Season 1, we're introduced to the other four Sailor Scouts. All are introduced in different ways and done very well. So yeah, it's the same story as the English dub, but done much better. And this is probably going to shock quite a few of you, but... I actually loved the first season of Sailor Moon Japanese dub. One thing I really like is how there's a gap between when each of the Sailor Scouts is introduced, giving time to develop themselves and their relationships with other characters. Our main character Usagi, mostly known as Sailor Moon, is clumsy, forgetful, lazy, and... not that bright. She's often late to school, eats too much, and focuses on other things than instead of what's important. However, she does change a whole lot. One thing everyone should know is that Usaki's still only 14 and not used to combat, so it's only natural she gets scared. Second, it's part of her character development. Yes, she does begin as a big scared crybaby, but she gets stronger as the show goes on. Seeing her love for her friends and others in danger is what motivates her to get stronger. One moment in particular is when she first awakens the power of the Silver Crystal. Because of her strong love for others, Usagi is able to use the Silver Crystal to temporarily tap into the power of the princess within her. This is brief, but absolutely fantastic. Up next, we have the brains of the group, Ami, aka Sailor Mercury. Of the main five, Ami's definitely the best at helping people solve their problems. A great example is when a boy has a crush on her, she can see that he really does care for her. She later gets feelings for him and wants to help him in any way she can. Rei, most commonly known as Sailor Mars, is a tsundere with a giant heart. Despite arguing with Usagi quite often, Rei really does care for Usagi. She wants her to do her best and know how to defend herself. Mako might be the bronze of the group easily taking down anyone in her way, but seeing her fangirl over attractive guys all the time is hilarious. 
She is a teenage girl after all. And while she does get overconfident at times, Maniko knows when to get serious and help the team out. Backstories such as why Maniko is hesitant about being in a relationship are very emotional. One thing that bothered me a little bit was that they didn't really explain what went on between Mako and her ex-boyfriend. My personal favorite character would be Tuxedo Mask, not just because he's the one cool hero dude of the group, but he has a great story and development to him. He helps out, but he also sees that Usagi needs to learn how to defend herself as well. He also slowly regains his memories and learns who he was in a past life. One big flaw I'd like to point out is that I'm quite surprised Luna didn't expect Sailor V, who's on video games and commercials, to be one of the Sailor Guardians sooner. For the cats? They're okay, they do help out and get screen time to themselves, but they're mainly just there to answer questions and give minor support. Another character I'd love to point out is Nephrodite, and he is just such a beautifully written character. Yes, he is a villain, but when he develops genuine love for Maru, you start to feel for him. He really does love her and wants to protect her, even if it's from his boss Queen Beryl. Nephrodite eventually ends up dying to protect Maru, and when he dies, it is just so emotional. The music, the voice acting, you can't help but feel bad for him. Even the Sailor Scouts shed a few tears. You can even cry for villains if the writing's good enough, and Nephrodite is just such a fine example of a villain who we actually come to feeling for, and when he dies, we cry. I also liked how Konzite and Zodite were able to love each other despite being villains. Characters getting episodes to themselves both help flesh them out and add extra detail. And no matter what the mood is, the soundtrack of this show is fantastic. You especially can't go wrong with that iconic, catchy theme song. Some people might try to argue that reusing the same animation for the transformations and attacks over and over again can get obnoxious and is lazy. While I do see where they're coming from, I personally don't mind it. I love seeing the clips being played over and over again. At times, the scouts would combine their attacks to offer something new in animation as well. The next part will contain major spoilers for Season 1. If you do not want spoilers, please skip to here. Usagi and Mamoru are the reincarnations of Princess Serenity and Prince Endemion who were in love with each other. Beryl leads the people of Earth against the people of the moon into a war. There's a vicious war and Beryl and her army is almost triumphant. With her dying breath, Queen Serenity is able to seal away the people of darkness. She also sends the spirits of Princess Serenity, Prince Endemion, and the other Sailor Scouts out so they would be reborn in another life. And that was with her dying breath. When the Sailor Scouts and the Cats are able to find Queen Beryl's hideout... <sighs> doesn't go very well. One by one, our heroes die. And while none die in vain, you can't help but feel so emotional from each and every one. Usagi is the last one standing, and when she's sad, She's not crying for being a big crybaby. The tears are coming from love from the Sailor Scouts and Tuxedo Mask who die protecting her. And while it is a fantastic and an awesome final battle that Usagi's able to beat Queen Beryl with the Silver Crystal, there's also a giant drawback. The Silver Crystal is able to reincarnate everyone. However, besides the cats, everyone's memory was wiped. So, them being Sailor Scouts, Tuxedo Mask, their battles, their friendship, they don't remember any of that. In conclusion, I love Season 1 of Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon has made a giant impact, but in general, it's such a great show. The characters are amazingly written, even the ones that aren't as interesting are very well developed. The jokes won't make me stop laughing, the action is so epic and fun to watch. I've shed a few tears and I've definitely gasped when I watched this show as well. Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Mars are my favorite characters, but others aren't too far behind. And yes, it is a little disturbing how some of the shots we give these underage girls, so that is one flaw, but thankfully, some people are able to ignore it. Some 
people. I also wanted to give a big thank you for the Sailor Moon fanbase for being patient and telling me about the Japanese dub. Sometimes people took things a bit too far, but still, thank you guys so much. I'm glad I decided to give the Japanese dub a chance. The final verdict is a 9.5 out of 10, earning itself the Kush's seal of approval. This was me, Kush, and this time, it was my enjoyment for your amusement. Hey guys, it's me, Kush, and thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, subscribe, and share for friends. Got an idea for my show? Say it in the comments below or through the email right up there, and I'll put it into consideration. Thank you again for watching, and have a great day.